everybody. Um, yes, thank you for the introduction, Nigel. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased to speak to you about um, some of the work that the National Park Authority are doing with uh, local businesses in order to promote astrotourism. Just firstly to mention, uh, we're all really well aware of the um, amazing landscapes that we have here on Exmoor and that they're the primary reason why over 2 million visitors come here every year. Um, but when we think about the local economy and the importance of tourism on the economy, we really want to ma maximise the, the amount of visitors coming here every year, um, within reason, ob obviously. Um, but it's really important that we look at um, everything that the National Park has to offer. And as you've heard from Joe, um, our incredibly dark skies really add to our offer here in, in, um, in the southwest. The um, in, in, in addition to our incredibly dark skies, the tranquility and that sense of wonder that people can experience is quite unique. Um, and also the nocturnal wildlife that people can um, in, uh, experience if they come here. So what is astrotourism? Basically, it's all about people holidaying in a rural um, destination that has beautiful landscapes. The great thing about astrotourism is a lot of it is also done out of holiday peak holiday season. Um, because the nights get darker slightly earlier in the autumn and winter, um, and it's not quite so cold, um, the autumn and winter is a great time to attract people to come to Exmoor um, to make use of the stargazing opportunities. So that's a great asset for the National Park in terms of the local economy. Um, but also astrotourism is great in, in respect to the fact that it's really important that we um, help people better understand and really value the uniqueness of our dark skies. So if people come here and experience the wonder of them, they're more likely to appreciate the importance of dark skies um, and not having huge light pollution. I'm just gonna share a couple of screens with you. So our journey in astrotourism started really back in 2011, as Joe mentioned, where Nexmoor was designated as an international dark sky reserve by the International Dark Sky Association. It came at a really important time in um, sort of bringing astronomy into the spotlight. Brian Cox had just started his um, popular BBC Stargazing Live programmes and Exmoor featured within those. And since then, we've uh, very much began to um, be recognised as one of the top stargazing destinations in the UK. The, the more, vi you know, more visitors are becoming aware of it, and certainly the media are really good at helping to pass out the message. Sorry about that. There's a, yeah, we get loads of um, online material um, passed around to, you know, really wide audiences, even internationally, you'll see in the bottom middle there, something that was over in Japan. So um, Exmoor really does get its fair share of promotion for our dark skies. Um, and with astro photographs, like the ones we've got in some of those images there, which are often provided by um, keen amateur local astrophotographers, they really spark the enthusiasm and inspire the public to join us. So we've had quite a lot of coverage in some of the, um, the broadsheet papers, you know, the Telegraph, the Independent, the Guardian, they've all done features about our dark skies. And that really helps put astro tourism um, and Exmoor together for, in everyone's mind. So how have we been developing the opportunity um, locally here? Well, we've been um, working on a lot of projects in the last few months. Um, and years. So in the early days after we received our designation, we did quite a lot of work with uh, popular astronomer Seb Jay. At the time, he was one of the few people here who was offering dark sky experiences. Um, we asked him to not only run several events for us, but he also produced a dark skies uh, handbook, which we still sell now in our national park centres. Uh, we produced a couple of um, free dark skies pocket guides. We're now on the second edition of those. Um, and at our national park centres, we introduced telescope higher um, for the public, which um, is really popular, um, and also introduced us a small amount of merchandise in terms of um, astronomy and stargazing charts and stargazing material. As Joe mentioned, um, we recently produced the Astronomer's Guide to Exmoor National Park Dark Sky Reserve. Um, really pleased to say that's now available as a free download. The reason why we produced that, it, it became clear I'd been attending um, over the last few years, the Southwest Astronomy Show, 
um, down at the Norman Lockyer Observatory in, in Sidmouth. Um, and it became clear by talking to actual amateur astronomers, they wanted to know a little bit more than what we were previously offering them. They wanted to know where were the, the really best places to stop and set up their valuable telescopes and equipment. Um, and they wanted to know which might be the best businesses to go and stay with who might understand their needs. So from that, we um, started developing um, a few things um, in addition. So the, the guide was helpful for them. We also saw them as another audience for our Dark Skies Festival, which is being running now for, um, in, it's now into its fifth year. Um, so in addition to events throughout the year, we perhaps have um, some campouts with, with our national park rangers. We also have um, talks on things like glow worms and bats at night. Um, the festival over the last few years has really provided a key focal point for um, some of our activities and has really aided our promotion. During the festival, we aim um, our events at various audiences. The largest one definitely is the family audience. There's, you know, adults and children with next to no or, or very little knowledge of astronomy. And what we try and do is inspire them to want to know more, to want to understand why the skies are so important here. Um, and the benefits of having a dark sky and keeping our light pollution minimal. So we have talks from people like Joe at, at events at Wimbledon Lake. Um, but in addition to that, we have just events that are outdoors where people can enjoy the experience of Exmoor at night. For children, sometimes just being out at night on holiday is the most fantastic experience and the excitement of them is quite palpable. For those, those who are more adventurous, there's, people, you know, there's things like mountain biking at night. We've had running events at night. So um, in addition to the other things that we put on for astronomers, which might be um, talks by um, some quite eminent astronomers. Last year, we had some talks by Professor Roger Davis, who's a cosmologist with Oxford University. Um, people with a bit more in-depth knowledge can come to talks um, by people like Professor Davies, and they can also um, enjoy things like astro astrophotography workshops um, to inspire them to come here um, and experience our dark skies for themselves. The other thing that we realised is that people who um, who hear about our dark skies, they, they contact us and say, you know, where, where do I need to go? When can I come? Where can I stay? Um, and although, yes, it's very easy to say, well, you could stay anywhere on Exmoor and really enjoy the dark skies. It's nice to be able to, to push them towards certain um, people who have a passion for dark skies and will help them to get the most from their visit. So in the last couple of years, we've been developing a programme called our Dark Sky Friendly Accredited Business Scheme. Um, and I'm pleased to say that we have about 20 businesses who are now accredited. Um, they all appear on our website. Um, for those businesses, basically, they generally are accommodation providers, but they've had training um, by Joe um, and from ourselves in learning more about the night sky and learning more about how to help people spot basic constellations, to talk about the movement of some of the planets and to talk about the issues surrounding light pollution. So as someone who's perhaps, you know, their interest has been sparked in Exmoor's dark skies, it's a really good place for them to go and stay. In addition to the knowledge that those business owners now have, um, a lot of them also have now have equipment that can be available to loan. They might have um, just basic equipment, like it might be a, a ground sheet or blankets. It might be a, a flask available that they can go and make themselves some hot chocolate so they can sit out or lie out on the grass in the dark, um, look up and really experience um, what it's like to look up at thousands and thousands of stars. Um, some of them have gone a step further and some of them have binoculars and uh, telescopes that you can also borrow. So those 20 businesses um, are really doing their best to push out the message for us. Um, and as such, we hope are benefiting from receiving its star gazing enthusiasts. Some of the uh, uh, a couple of businesses there and in particular, there's a business called Wild About Exmoor, who are based at Exford. Now, um, pictured in the middle there is Jenny Wild. Her and her husband have been running Dark Skies experiences on Exmoor for several years now and have really gained valuable experience and knowledge in running events, um, both static with telescopes and talking about what they can see in the night sky, um, but also taking people on walks at, at night. Um, and they've been really well received. We're um, pleased to have um, just recently um, put them and Exford Bridge Tea Rooms together. Um, they've formed a collaboration, which we now call the Dark Sky Discovery Hub. It's a place where people can go to the tea rooms, they can find out more about stargazing in the area, they can see star charts of what's on in the night sky at the minute, they can also find out about events. 
um, and starting on the 1st of June, um, Jenny and the Exford Bridge Tea Rooms are um, joining together and giving weekly presentations and stargazing evenings with a bit of a meal thrown in um, so that our visitors can enjoy the stargazing experience and learn about our dark skies all year round. So we're really pleased that's literally just come together in the last couple of months. Later on this year, we'll also um, be adding another Duck Sky Discovery Hub, which will be at Wimbledon Lake, um, where again, there will be events happening all year round, which will be really key towards our Dark Sky and Astro Tourism office offer. The, uh, the last thing I want to mention that we're working on at the minute and we're going to be um, promoting later this summer is a dark sky discovery trail. Again, when I mentioned about the focal points that we need, so when people are thinking, where can I go? What do I do then? Um, we wanted to develop a walk which people could do safely at night that we promoted as a, a walk to be done at night. Um, and this walk um, is only, it's only a mile or so long um, out on the open moor, but what's special about it is that it has 360 degree um, views of the sky. So on a clear night, um, you really will be, anyone will be completely blown away by the experience they have there. It can be something that they can do themselves. There'll be, it'll be a self-guided experience. But in order to promote it, we will also have a, um, a sort of flyer and a downloadable information to help them do it safely um, and confidently. Um, and we will also be having a short film. And that's why we're not promoting it just yet, because we want to capture some footage this summer um, of the Milky Way that you heard Joe talking about which we will use in our promotion of the Dark Sky Discovery Trail. So, um, as I said, we've got things now developing all year round for people to come and do. Um, there's loads of resources here. We've got businesses who are trained in helping people make the most of our dark skies. Um, and as such, that's all really positive news, we think, for tourism in the area. All of the information um, that I've talked about in terms of the businesses and uh, the opportunities for stargazing uh, the, the guide from Joe, they're all available on our stargazing web page, which is there. Um, just as a backdrop for this uh, web page, I've got one of Keith's photographs there, the sort of thing that we use to help promote Exmoor and our stargazing um, offer. So I hopefully um, that will make sense. And if there's no, not too many technical problems, uh, Keith will be talking to you next. Katrina, thanks ever so much. That was really interesting. So much going on, on the, in, uh, within the National Park and um, we're really lucky to have you pushing it forward like that. Thank you very much.